morning guys uh, it's a Monday beginning of the week we did some awesome four-wheeling yesterday uh, pretty sure Hamish is gonna make a video on it broke two trucks and uh, or an SUV in a truck and lo and behold Pathfinder made it just fine so yeah unbreakable anyway I'm uh, I'm off today solo to uh, driving to New Mexico. I'm going to see if my truck can do a little redemption from the last trip. This is the first real out of town trip since putting the new turbo on. We went and got that Pathfinder for Hamish up in the mountains. But driving, I don't know, right around a thousand miles today. So uh, I do have Zach's trailer. So just a single car open. But I think it's I think it's gonna be good. Um, I've been wanting to do a review of this turbo video, but um, my trans has some issues. I think they're just solenoids. But there's some things I want to do to that before uh, before I do the turbo review video. But she rips. She feels good. Um, yeah. She did have one hiccup on the way back from that track day at High Plains with the Dakar car. I was driving fairly, fairly spiritedly on the way back. I've always smelled coolant since we did the, since I did the turbo swap, and it emptied the secondary cooling system on this. We didn't know the 6.7s have two um, cooling systems. Only one big radiator, but they have like two separate units with like valves and stuff, and the sim system that emptied is also the system that uh, I think it does the intercooler. Um, which is like an air to water, air intercooler on this. And then the transmission cooler is also uses that system. So transmission got kind of hot um, and stuff. I, I like putted her back and uh, I could keep the temps pretty, pretty in check. So we did all right. Uh, it turned out, it looked like just the radiator cap was bad on that, um, on that reservoir. So what had happened is it, it just, got up to a certain tip and it just pushed all the coolant out of the radiator cap. So got a new radiator cap on there and things seem good. I still smell coolant occasionally, but you gotta remember that it emptied the entire cooling system onto the side of the engine right there. So it's probably gonna burn off for a while every time it gets warm. But I brought a couple jugs of Ford Yellow so I can uh, I can top it off as needed. And yeah, and if you remember Zach's trailer has a bent axle, that's we got the flat tires last time when we went to go. Um, but I actually found a deal on two new wheels that fit Zach's trailer, so I picked those up and I have two spares in the bed of my truck. So, worst case, I can change tires. But yeah, um, I'm going down to uh, buy a car. It seems to be a good deal. Well, here, let's start this. Betty 30 video, where there was that video with me driving around buying all the cars and stuff. Uh, that, that 88 uh, Super Etta car. Um, somebody saw that video and was like, hey, I got a bronze door for you if you want it. You can just come get it for free. He's like six hours away. And I really appreciate the sentiment there. And I want to meet this guy. He said he might have some other stuff I can look through. His name's Jesse. Um, but burning a whole day and all the fuel just to go get an E30 door um, is, is quite a bit. So I started looking and um, I, I found a car worth buying down there too. So I'm gonna haul down an empty trailer and we'll pick up that car and yeah, I'll show it to you guys. We'll see, um, we'll see if there's anything interesting along the way to film. It's about 9 a.m. Um, it's about six hours, a little over six hours away from my house is the first stop. And I'm just gonna cruise. We're full of fuel. It says we have 819 miles till empty. So I can make it all the way there, no problem. Probably have to maybe get some fuel on the way back once we have the car. Gotta imagine that uh, bent axle on Zach's trailer is not going to help me at all on the, uh, the fuel mileage. So, yeah. So I will check in with you guys and uh, yeah. hit that like button if you like these kind of videos and uh, thanks for hanging out. All right, quick update. We're, uh, it's about 1145. 
we're in New Mexico, we're just driving down Raton Pass. Um, truck's doing good. I've watched the temps a little bit. Oil temp is been right around 200 degrees, a little under the whole trip, and trans temp as well stayed between 196 and 198. So, she seems fine. Obviously, we'll check tire wear when we get there on the trailer. Let's see. But, so that's that. I think the truck's good. Um, yeah, I, I think I think we fixed pretty much everything. Done the little maintenance overhaul from the uh, from when the turbo blew up. Um, along with the new turbo, we also did put in uh, all new intercooler charge piping on the cold side and hot side of the intercooler. Because after we put the new turbo on, then it was blowing the couplers off and actually put a hole in two of them. So. Just small stuff. I still need to do the trans uh, work that I want to do because it's still, it's on upshift. It shifts really harsh from one to two. And then from downshifts, it shifts really hard. Oh, Ralph's gone. Uh, it shifts really hard from three to two. So it's pretty much going into second gear. It doesn't like it. So it shifts. It always shifts into gear. It's just like really harsh, like it's not smooth. So, I don't know. But anyway, um, a little over 200 miles out, a little under three hours away. And yeah, I'll show you guys this uh, this car that I found and just decided to pick up. So, all right. All right, guys, I just uh, stopped up here real quick, checked tire wear on the trailer. They're wearing pretty bad. Um, those were brand new tires the last time I drove this trailer, and there's almost no tread left on the outside shoulders. So, text from Hamish. Um, I'm about 30 minutes out, about 30 miles out from the car. I might load the uh, car and then switch the tires that are on it. Uh, it's the front axle that's bent. Move those tires to the rear axle and then keep going and then watch those on the way back, the, the ones I moved to the front and then put the spares on the front later if needed. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's about 60 degrees, black asphalt, no water anywhere. So it's, it's, uh, it's definitely going to be wearing the tires more than in the rain or something like that. So, Zach, need to buy an axle, this is bad. Or just fix my trailer so I don't have to borrow yours. No, Zach's a good dude. I actually dropped my trailer off from my shop to his shop last week, so hopefully, hopefully this week he fixes it, so that'd be cool. But anyway, I'm about a half hour out. I'm going to just, okay, so the car I'm buying has no key and no title. Uh, so, I don't know these people at all. I'm not gonna record in front of them. So I'll load the car up, I'll get out of there. And then uh, I checked to see it's not stolen. So I'm not worried there, but it's just, you know, I'm in the middle of nowhere in New Mexico. I don't wanna make people weirded out recording. So I'll pick up the car and then I'll, I'll stop and show you guys. Maybe I'll stop, change the tire, wheels and tires, show you guys that. So anyway, see you in a second. Well, I picked up the car. Um, yeah, there it is, 318 Ti, and it uh, appears to be uh, pretty clean, actually. Um, I pulled this trim off, it looked like it was just two-sided taped on, and then uh, I pulled the front off, it's in the back, but it's, uh, it's like a 96 car. Cloth interior, obviously, like most of them. The seats are in fairly nice condition. I have no idea how many miles I did that to get it neutral. So, the car did not come with a key or a title. It was, uh, a guy needed to uh, get it off of his property. His buddy left it there for a year. So, who knows? Maybe it's going to get reported stolen in a bit. I don't know. Anyway. It can be a parts car for me, or we can make it a track car. We'll figure out something to do with it, but it's fairly clean. It's dusty, sitting out in New Mexico desert, but it appears to all be here. So, yeah. 
What do you guys think? What should I do with the TI? I, I bought it to make money with somehow, so I don't really plan on keeping it. But yeah, I'm assuming it's been painted at some sort because I don't know what the hell's going on there. Here's the tires that I was talking about. So if you look on the outside, it's just about gone. It's still brand new over here. So we'll move those to the back real quick and we'll get back on the road and uh, work on, yeah, getting the next stop, B30 parts. All right guys, I picked up the door. It's right there. Um, I hung out with that Jesse kid for I don't know, an hour and a half, maybe two hours talking with him. Super cool kid. Uh, he's been uh, doing E30 stuff for a couple years now. and So I guess sold a lot of parts over the last year. The prices he told me, like it's it's wild what people are willing to pay these days. But uh, apparently he just had like five E30s and then he just has one parts one now, but he just bought a new uh, ES. So we're gonna make it nice and for him. So that's cool. And then that super cool spot his dad used to or still does it looks like restore and modify like try five chevys so like 55 56 57 chevys and then where his brother did some drift stuff and some other things. just a lot of cool junk out in the you know around their house out there it was pretty cool walking around so i got this ti what what should i do with it guys i don't have a title i don't have keys i heard it runs poorly um doesn't have a catalytic converter on it so there's not really anything to take off to sell parts wise besides like the rear knuckles uh, or the rear trailing arms you know five lug swap for an e30 so i got no idea what to do with it it's, it's alaska blue it's in pretty decent shape it's been repainted drop a comment tell me if you have anything to do with it i mean i really don't know what to do with it at all so anyway thanks for watching um i'll catch you guys on the next one i got some e30 plans uh, i'm gonna share with you guys soon also worked on the gtr a little bit and the uh the gray one the engine needs to come back out but nate from vie has been helping and and he's down to help again we messed up a swap harness or one of the sub harnesses that's still on the engine is for an R33, not a 32, so it doesn't plug in. So we need to pull it. We might be able to do it in the car. We're gonna try, but yeah, that's what we got going on. So thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. If uh, if anything eventful happens on my way home, I'll pull out the camera and put it at the end of this video. But if not, I'll uh, catch you in the next one.